Alright, uh, yo, what is going on, guys? Uh, it's your boy, Suchi. Hold on, let me clean the lens real quick. Alright, cool. Uh, so, we're in the FD right now. I'm about to crank it up. Today, we are going to go on a little PLV drive. I have the uh, this thing. I also want to go over... A lot of people ask... Um, oh, we may have a vacuum leak. Well, that kind of goes into my topic. Uh, a lot of people ask, like, what's it like owning... What's it like owning these old cars? Like, old... RX-7s or old 90s cars and I'm gonna kind of just do a, a quick breakdown of Sorry, sorry a quick breakdown of what it's like to own one of these cars and all the like little nuances and Little things that you know, you kind of just have to check up on versus new cars or something like a, I don't know like a Prius or a Tesla or something like something like that, you know, so I'm gonna go over that today Alright, yo, what's going on guys? Uh, it's your boy we're back. Uh, I already did the intro, so I'm gonna get right into the video. I can't really see right now. God, there's a badass truck in front of me. Hold on, let me let me give this guy the sauce real quick. Let me just one sec. Let me let me give him the Gapple B special real quick. Oh, never mind. That's a police officer right there. Never mind, guys. We can't we can't give anyone the Gapple Bs. Uh, Just cruising on the highway at legal speeds with my very legal exhaust and my California compliant turbocharger. Okay. Alright, on to the video. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you guys want to get into these kinds of cars, I get this question a lot. And it's like, it, it's, it's a pretty complex, like, answer and like path to like, even obtain one of these cars. But basically how I got mine, I got mine like three years ago, so I got it before they jumped in price. But if you guys want them now, there's a couple of things you want to like look out for. The first is budget. Uh, you guys are looking to get, this for general, you know, this is generally a big thing for 90s cars is what's your budget? Let's say your budget is like $10,000. Don't go out and buy a $10,000 car. Do not spend your entire budget on the car itself. Uh, if you're looking, if you have a $10,000 budget, go out and buy a $5,000 car. Ooh. Go out and buy a $5,000 car and then have $5,000 for whatever the car actually will need. And you may think like, oh no, the car's perfect. I'm buying a $10,000 car and it says all these things are done. Dude, the car's probably been through like, you know, five plus owners you don't know the complete history of the car so you don't actually know if these things are done unless they're like very detailed like in in the books like in the car facts like type of maintenance but that's also very rare and if you are buying a car like that uh the price tag's not going to be uh you know very very affordable it'll be at the highest point right that's the kind of like that's like a cars and bids car i'm sorry a uh, bring a trailer car if you're buying a bring a trailer car this video probably doesn't apply to you. If you're buying it off of just a guy like I did, like a third party thing, like cars and bids, Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, then this definitely applies to you. But if you're buying like the top of the top, you know, I mean, I guess this doesn't really apply to you, but then again, like you have money, so. Me, right? Uh -huh. So yeah, you wanna basically, don't spend all your budget on the car itself. Always set aside money for anything that could go wrong, like maintenance, things like that. Not even, don't even think about modifications until you bought the car and you can determine that it's solid after you know you dump some money into it and make sure that uh, all the maintenance and all the big major things have been done to it. So that's the first thing, it's budget and maintenance. The car will definitely need maintenance, especially if the car is 30 years old. Like this one, uh, it just, there's gonna be things that go wrong. Things don't last forever, and especially when they were made in the 90s. Uh, you know, engineering was great back then, uh, however, it was great at the time. Times have changed, you know, technology has advanced. Things in the 90s just aren't as great as the things that they make today. Um, for example, the turbocharger system in this car was custom made, the manifold, and then the turbo is obviously made in, I don't know, like 2010 or something. I forgot when the Gen 2 Precision Turbo came out, but it was within the last 10 years. Um, Versus, you know, I swapped this, I put this in over the old stock twin turbo system. The twin turbo system was cool at the time when it came out. But I mean, 
mine was all cracked, it was leaking oil, all the electronic, like the vacuum systems were just garbage. So, uh, like I said, it's great, you know, if you maintain it, but my turbocharger system, the stock one, was not maintained in the car. So, that's something you really gotta think about is these major components, like when were they last serviced? Like, how much money does it need to like resurface them? Or are there better alternatives for the car that you're buying that you can for sure get? And uh, that leads me into my next, uh, my next, uh, I guess, step to, or thing to like watch out for when you're buying an older car like this is availability. Not only availability of like the car itself, like for example, this car, they only made 12,000 units in the United States over three years. I'm one of those owners. Half of them are probably crashed or on jack stands and half of them are barely running. I count as one of those barely running ones. So you gotta think about that, you know, it, it's taxed. These cars are taxed, especially when you get into FDs. Uh, 240SXs, you know, I have one. There's still quite a few out there, but they are rising in price. Uh, then let's talk about availability of parts. So if I wanna get interior bits for this car, like my old cracked, um, like lid covers here, they're discontinued from Mazda. So I have to go out and buy, if I want them, I have to go find an aftermarket source, source that and then buy it for this, you know, this little lid or this little bin. That's not as cheap as the OEM Mazda ones. It's like $200 or like $100 for just a little plastic lid. So yeah, you know, you want to think about that is are, are these parts that you know go out often or that need to be replaced often that crack often that break often still available right otherwise you know i mean if you're okay with just having a broken piece then yeah these cars can be for you but for a lot of you i'm sure in the future you would like to have a lid or you'd like to have uh for example my passenger door handle is discontinued i would love to have a passenger door handle so my you know passengers don't have to open up the, the window all the time so that's another thing you want to think about is availability of each uh, each component that of the car that goes out. All right, guys. Sorry, I had to uh, I had to visit my parents real quick to say what's up. But uh, yeah, so back to where I was. Uh, what was I saying? The last thing I'd say for advice is find someone, find someone or a reliable group of information whether that be your friends or whether that be a lo local forum make sure you have that on hand because I mean I'm not gonna lie a lot of like the stuff online is is hit or miss but like knowing somebody that's actually like physically worked on them and like has done these things for sure and not just some random guy on an old ass forum from 30 years ago is a really, really awesome thing to have. So, I mean, I joined, I was invited luckily to a NorCal Rotary group like three years ago when I bought my car. I didn't know anything about Rotaries at all. I knew nothing. Like, this is my first, this is the first time I was ever, ever in an RX-7 was buying this car. I bought this car in Portland and I drove and I was like, oh, so this is what an RX-7 feels like. And I paid the guy 11 grand and I drove this thing home, 700 miles. Uh, not the smartest thing to do, but I did it and it worked out well for me. Do I suggest doing that? No, definitely not. Bring someone that knows what the hell, you know, they're doing. So, uh, yeah, but anyways, I, I joined the group and then they, all the guys are a little, they're a little older than me. They're probably like around like 10 years older than me, maybe give or take more or less, but, uh, yeah, they're all a little bit older and they invited me to a video call. And they call, I remember I was in my college dorm, they called me for like an hour and they just went over the whole breakdown of rotaries and just all the basic information I should know. And it was super, 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 super helpful because it really gave me like a perspective of like what I'm getting into. Even though I had already bought the car and I had already gotten into it, but they recommended me the, the local shop, they recommended me Sake Bomb to go to. You know, I went there, I took the car there because it needed some it needed some work. And yeah, they were all really helpful. Um, if you can't do the work, if you cannot do the work yourself, which I wasn't able to back then, or I was too afraid to, find a trustworthy shop. So for me, I went to Sake Bomb Garage 
Um, they're a very trustworthy and awesome local shop. They're actually one of the only rotary shops in the Bay Area, but they're also like the best. So I know that people from even LA send their cars to uh, Sake Bomb or from out of state send their cars to Sake Bomb for service. So, you know, I took my car there and it's it's been running ever since. I only recently, maybe like a year ago, started doing my own work, but the first like two years, a year of ownership, they did all the major work and it, the cars run like ran like flawlessly mechanically. So big shout out to them. And yeah, it's basically just find people that know what they're doing that can either give you or help you out, you know, with the car or give you information to help you out with the car. Uh, because without that, you're just going to be relying on people from 30 years ago on the forums and just old, outdated kind of information that can be relevant, but you really got to dig for it. Um, so that's really going to help you out when you're dealing with old cars like these. And it's, uh, it's really helped me out and it's really helped me even wrench out my own car. So shout out to all those people that have, have helped me out. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then <laughs> I guess one one last one last thing is have another car. Don't make this your only car. Do not do not make this your only car. That is the dumbest thing you could do. Uh, if it is your only car, do not be upset or surprised when you got to Uber somewhere or. You gotta ask your friend for a ride uh, because your car is on jack stands or it's not operating or something fried out. Something happened where it's not operable. You just, you can't be, as the car shuts off. Yeah, you can't be upset, you know, or surprised when the car inevitably uh, breaks down. There's a reason why they're, they're called project cars, right? Uh, it's because they don't, they don't work like dailies do. They don't work 100%. Even dailies don't work 100% of the time. Project cars work even less of that time. So, yeah, those are the things that you just kind of want to look out for. But, yeah, so I guess those are all the uh, steps that you want to take and uh, just kind of know before you get into one of these cars. And other than that, if you're ready to do that, go out and buy one. If it breaks, so it's not my fault. Yo, what is going on, guys? If you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much. Uh, I hope this was like a cool, I, you know, informational video for you guys because I get a lot of these questions and I just kind of want to like throw a video out there where it like kind of explains like what you should do. Yeah, it could have been summarized a lot faster, but I also wanted to like give like my perspective and also my own experience and not just tell you, like reiterate things that I've, like you can just Google, you know. I want to give you guys like my own personal experience with my RX-7. It's like real advice. It's, it's like it really happened to me. So it's not just some random like, oh. 5Z steps on how to buy a project car on Google. Like, no, there's like, I live through it, so I just want to tell it through, I guess, yeah, my experience to you guys. But anyways, um, we do have all these stickers for sale. If you guys didn't know, we post on the Instagram, but I want to make a video showing all these super, super cool peekers. They could still be found on the merch site, so be sure to cop some if you guys want them. These are all spot hollows. They're really cool. They have like reflectiveness. This is reflective and this is reflective. And you got the Takumi and Keisuke right here. Both the new Hashiria steering wheels. Super, super cool. I have three of them on my car. So if you guys like them, want to support, you know, the link will be in my description. Anyways, once again, guys, thank you so much for sticking to the end. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.